Hey everyone, it's Bradley Bush with another algebra video. Today we're talking about polynomials and their graphs. Our to-do list, first we'll do a quick review of polynomials, then we'll jump right into the intermediate value theorem for polynomials. That is the focus of this video. And I'll do one quick example using the intermediate value theorem for polynomials. Let's get started. So first, what is a polynomial? This is the quick version that still tries to stay fairly mathematical. So a polynomial has three different parts. The first part, I think, is probably your favorite because it's the variable. We've got all these x's, right? And a constant term. Here are the x's in the definition. They're just variables. No big deal. So each of those x's has an exponent and it has a coefficient. So our exponents are up here. In my example, 3, 2, there's actually an exponent here. And there's actually an x to the 0 here. Anything to the 0 is just 1. So that isn't written. The x to the 0 is just equal to 1, and it isn't written. But you can see the, the exponents, the 1 and the 0. So those actually exist up here as well. In our definition, that looks kind of nasty at the very top. Before I do this, let me write one more thing. I need to put my x to the 0 and put a 1 here so you can see. All right. So in the, in the definition at the top, we still see our, our exponents. The biggest one is n, and then we subtract 1 from there. So if n happens to be 3, like it is down here, then you subtract one, you get two. You subtract one, and you get one more. You subtract one more, and you get one. So we just do de decreasing order of exponents, subtracting by one, until we get to one, and then there's the zero. So the exponents themselves, they, they can be zero, one, two, three, and on up. They can't be negative. They can't be fractional. They can only be zero, one, two, three, and on up. So the last part of a polynomial is it's got a coefficient, right? It's got a number in front of it. And up in this definition, all the, the a's, those are just the numbers in front. The subscript, n, is purely a label that tells you that it goes with the term with an n in the exponent. The n minus 1 is just a label that says it goes with the second term. n minus 2 just says it, it's the coefficient that goes with the third term. But they're just coefficients. They're just numbers. And those numbers can be real any real number you just can't have an imaginary number so that's your polynomial the degree of a polynomial that's the highest power n so in our example we have a third degree polynomial because our highest power is three polynomials are also smooth and continuous they don't have breaks in their graphs and their turns are nice and curvy they're not jagged or rigid there's your review of a polynomial Let's start now the meat of this, this video, the Intermediate Value Theorem. So the Intermediate Value Theorem is actually really simple. All it says that if you have a polynomial, because a polynomial is smooth and continuous, if you have a polynomial and your polynomial, you, you find some value x equals a, and you evaluate that. If you happen to have a negative come out, so that, the pol that means the polynomial is below the x-axis, you pick another, another number, x equals b, and you evaluate that. If that number is positive, all it says is that you can't change signs in the polynomial, meaning the y value of the polynomial is negative and it changes to positive, or vice versa. You can't have that happening without the polynomial first going through 0, or going through the x-axis. That's all the intermediate value theorem says. It says there's this intermediate value, we call it c in our definition here, that must appear if the function evaluation at a and the function evaluation at b are different signs. If they have opposite signs, then there is at least one zero. We'll call that zero x equals c. 
between x equals a and x equals b. That's it. That's the intermediate value theorem. Kind of cool, huh? It just means you can't go from below the graph, below the x-axis to above the x-axis without passing through zero, passing through the x-axis. Let's do a quick example now. So here is our polynomial. It's a cubic x cubed plus 3x squared plus minus x minus 3. So say, um, let's evaluate the polynomial at, let's say, x equals 2. We would see that's probably about 3, my guess. So it's going to be positive, right? Let's see, negative, let's evaluate the polynomial negative 2. Put in negative 2 for all of the inputs. This gives us negative 8. This gives us positive 12, positive 2, and negative 3. And yep, that does give us 3. And 3 is, by the way, bigger than 0, right? We're above the x-axis. Okay, so the sign is positive. That's what we get from there. Let's choose another value. Let's choose... Uh, x equals 0. So right here, we shoot that down. What is that value? Uh, it looks it actually looks like it's about negative 3. So let's see. If we put a negative, whoops, negative, put in 0 here. Let's see what we get back. That means we get 0 cubed, which is 0. 0 squared times 3 is 0. Minus 0 is 0. We get negative 3 which is negative. So we have a negative. So we have a sign change, right? We go from a positive sign to a negative sign. In other words, we go from up here to down here. So by the intermediate value theorem for polynomials, we know that somewhere in between the original spot, x equals two, negative 2 and x equals 0, somewhere in between there, we have to have an x-intercept because we changed signs when we evaluated the functions. We went from positive to negative. So it says for the intermediate value theorem for polynomials says that since f of negative 2 was positive and f of 0 was negative, there must be a 0 between x equals negative 2 and x equals 0. And we can see it right? We can see there's a zero at x equals negative one. That's it. That's the intermediate value theorem for polynomials. Hope this was helpful. If it was, subscribe to the channel and I hope you have a great day.